so this is the fifth chapter mental behavioral and neurodevelopmental disorders so this chapter will be mainly related to the psychiatric disorders now we'll see in an order wise now the first one as we have discussed earlier the series will be coming between f01 to f99 series f01 to f99 series and the pain disorders related to psychological factors now this one we have discussed yesterday f45.41 this we need to assign exclusively when it is related to psychological disorders so the code description will be like this f45.41 is pain due to psychosomatic disorders so in that case you need to assign this f45.41 now here the code f45.42 now this one we'll see pain disorders with related psychological factors should be used with a code from g89 now this g89 what is the g89 we need to see this g89 series now here code also related to psychological factors associated with pain so in this case whenever you are coding this f45.42 series you need to assign this g89 series also now you can see so g89 series you can use it with this f45.42 so if there is documentation of a psychological component for a patient with acute or chronic pain so you have a specific codes also for this in this g89 acute and chronic pain like if you go down you will have this codes acute pain not elsewhere classified and the chronic pain not elsewhere classified these are the codes you need to assign with these codes okay and also if you see it clearly there's a chronic pain syndrome you can use this g89.4 also when there is a chronic pain which is associated with significant psychosocial dysfunction so all these codes you can assign based on your documentation now next one if you see this also we have discussed yesterday the use abuse and dependence so what is meant by use if the patient is using it occasionally means once in a while if he is using any for example uh, the patient is having the habit of taking tobacco or the nicotine so if he is taking it occasionally we will call it as use and the abuse he will be taking it continuously every day and the dependence dependence means the patient will be completely dependent on the tobacco or nicotine so that we will call it as dependence now coming to the documentation part now coming to the guidelines part and the documentation suppose if both use and abuse are documented then you need to code only for the abuse so why we need to code only for the abuse is because here the abuse is bit severe than the use and here if abuse and dependence are documented then we need to code only for the dependence because here the dependence will be a bit severe than the abuse and if abuse and dependence all are documented so use abuse and dependence all are documented then we need to code only for the dependence now here the concept is which one is more severe that we need to code it okay the next one are you are you able to follow Yeah. now here there are some definitions here so dementia is characterized by the development of multiple cognitive deficits such as memory loss or memory impairment or cognitive disturbances including aphasia apraxia and agnosia now in general in general we can uh, see this dementia the common term as a memory loss and the patient will be having aphasia means he cannot uh, speak properly okay and here 
apraxia apraxia means it is a, it is a kind of neurological disorder and uh, the patient will not be able to uh, you know he he he's not able to perform any kind of activities properly means firstly he cannot uh, do so those type of things we'll call it as apraxia and agnosia agnosia means he cannot able to present the whatever the sensations he will be having he will not present it means he cannot tell what is happening with him so that we'll call it as agnosia aphasia apraxia and agnosia all these things are also the symptoms of this dementia now here there is a direct code f02.8 we can code for dementia in other diseases classified elsewhere so these are all the direct codes so mostly in the psychological uh, disorders so all the things will be the direct code the only thing is you need to understand any combination is available or not so that we need to check if the combination is available then we can go for the combination code otherwise you can code it as a single code without any specification okay now when assigning the codes f02.80 and f02.81 code first the underlying physiological condition associated with dementia now for example patient is having dementia because of alzheimer's disease now if it is mentioned like this now in that case you need to code for first what we need to code code first the underlying physiological condition so what is a physiological condition so the physiological condition you need to find out and you need to code it first and then you need to code for the symptom now for example alzheimer disease is there and the patient is having dementia now in that case you need to code for alzheimer disease first followed by dementia suppose if the patient is having the parkinson's disease and because of this the patient is also having the dementia in that case parkinson's disease you need to code it first followed by dementia code now here there is another scenario when the cause of the dementia is not specified then what we need to do now this guideline just know what we have discussed is when the dementia cause is specified now in this case dementia causes alzheimer disease or parkinson's disease now here when the cause of the dementia is not specified the dementia is classified to the subcategory f03.9 that is unspecified dementia because we are not supposed to code for any specified code because nothing is mentioned in that now the fifth digit distinguishing without behavioral disturbance or without or with behavioral disturbance now if you see this code the code description explains the same f03.90 if you see now here you have two codes f03.90 and f03.91 now f03.90 is specifying without behavioral disturbance and f03.91 is with behavioral disturbance so you have two specified codes here so you need to check if any uh, behavioral disturbance is there or not if the disturbance is there then you need to select the codes based on that the next point is if the patient has a tendency to wander off then you need to code for z91.83 now z91.83 wandering off so what is meant by wandering off here means he'll be thinking by himself that i have got this kind of disease and these symptoms are uh, related to this but the patient will not be having those kind of symptoms but he'll be thinking so z91.83 i can see this z91.83 if he's wandering in the diseases now there is another concept called schizophrenic disorders now before that you need to understand what is this exactly schizophrenic disorders now schizophrenia means generally it is not mentioned here but uh, schizophrenic condition means the patient is having the lack of social contact or the patient will be having the depression then we will call it as a schizophrenic disorders it is uh, considered as a severe mental illness characterized by this following uh, behaviors like bizarre behavior and disordered th disorganized thinking 
Now, disorganized thinking means suddenly the patient will be speaking about something and suddenly he'll be shifting the topic to the other topic. So, it will be very clumsy. So, which are unrelated. And disorganized speech. Now, disorganized speech means mostly the patients will be having the slurred speech. Means he cannot speak properly. Means in the half he'll be speaking first and he'll be taking the gap and again he'll be taking some gaps. He cannot speak in the continuous manner. So, that is a disorganized speech. And decreased emotional expressiveness means he cannot express anything. So, because of the lack of social contact, he will not be able to properly give out the emotional expressiveness. And diminished or loss of contact with reality means he will not be nowhere connected with the reality. The realities he will not be experiencing because of the lack of the social contact. Like this is diminished to total social withdrawal. Now, when you are coming across this schizophrenic disorders or the schizophrenia codes, then you need to check this specificity here. Now, if you check this, you will understand this F20.0. Now, if you are going for this code F20.0, this is, now you can see the different type of schizophrenia here, paranoid schizophrenia and disorganized schizophrenia and catatonic schizophrenia and undifferentiated schizophrenia. So, these are all the different type of schizophrenia you will be having. So, when you are coding for this schizophrenia condition, also you need to check the specification what type of schizophrenia it is. If nothing is mentioned, then you need to code for the unspecified one. Now, you can see all these things. F20.1, F20.2, F20.3, this is undifferentiated schizophrenia and F20.5. You can see rest of things. If nothing is mentioned, you can pick this code F20.9. Now, this is affective disorders. Now, what is this affective disorders? So, these are all the things will be coming under the affective disorders like major depressive disorder or bipolar disorders and anxiety disorders. So, these are all the things which will be coming under the affective disorders. Now, in this, how you need to select the codes? Now, here we will be having episode type. Now, episode type means, now we will see that F32 series, if you go for the F32 series, then you will understand it. Now, you can see this episodic type. F32.0 is for single episode and uh, this is mild one and F32.1 is for single episode moderate. So, here what are the keywords whenever you come across this depressive disorder also you need to consider these keywords like mild whether you need to check whether it is mild, moderate and severe or whether it is a single episode or multiple episodes. So, those things you need to check when you, whenever you are selecting the codes. If nothing is mentioned, again you need to code for by default code that is F32.9 that is depression, major depressive disorder. Now, here the same thing it is mentioned, mild, moderate, severe without psychotic features and severe with psychotic features and in remission. So, what is meant by in remission here? In remission means the first patient got normal. Once the patient has got, once the patient is having the depressive disorder, for some time he is stable and again it is coming back. Means again the patient is experiencing the same symptoms again. So, that in that case you need to code it as a in remission. But when you go for the documentation, when we are coding it, so we cannot judge ourselves that it is a, rem again the condition is remitted again. So, that should be documented by the physician that the major depressive disorder is in remission. Then only we can select this code in remission. In full remission, in full remission means complete symptoms again he is experiencing. So, in that case you need to take the fifth character here. Now, fifth, the character as five. If 
So when we need to take this other specified one. Suppose if the physician is explaining some type of major depressive disorder and that is not listed in your specification. In that case, we need to select the other specified one, other specified major depressive disorder. And if nothing is mentioned, then we need to take it as an unspecified one. These are all the theory part. Now, non-psychotic mental disorders. Now, in this non-psychotic mental disorders, the variety of anxiety, dissociative, stress-related, somatoform and other non-psychotic mental disorders are classified under F40 through F48. Now, we will see what all these F40 to F48 series. Now, these are all the phobic phobias. Now, social phobia is there, agoraphobia is there and animal type phobia. So, all these phobias are coming under F40 series. Now you can see all the phobia codes here. Suppose if nothing is mentioned, again you need to code for unspecified one and that phobia which is mentioned is not listed under this, then you need to take it as a other phobic anxiety disorders. Now these are all the things which are listed here. Now here reactions to stress. Now in this the main thing you need to understand is PTSD that is post traumatic stress disorder. Now the code series you will be getting under F43.1. Now you can see it here F43.1 that is post traumatic stress disorder. So this is the direct code here. So the, when the patient is having the some traumas earlier. So, because of the trauma, if the patient is experiencing some kind of stress, we will call it as post-traumatic stress disorder. Like you can see some examples here, F43.21, F43.21. To one. This is adjustment disorder with depressed mood. So, these are all the different type of PTSDs. Post traumatic stress disorders, these are all the different types. Now, here dissociative and conversion disorders. Now, F44.5, this is conversion disorder with seizures or convulsions. Now, these are all the direct codes, F44.5. You can see here, these are conversion disorders. So, a lot of specifications we have here. Conversion disorder with seizures or convulsions, this is one type. And conversion disorder with sensory symptoms is another type and mixed symptoms is another type and if nothing is mentioned again you need to go for unspecified one and if other things are specified but it is not listed here then you need to go for F44.89 that is other dissociative and conversion disorders. So mostly in the fifth chapter mental and behavioral studies Mostly you will be having the direct quotes except there are two guidelines here. One is uh, substance abuse thing that is uh, use, abuse and dependence that is the first guideline. And the second guideline is when you are coding for the pain due to psychosomatic disorders you need to code for F45.41. So mainly you will be coming across these two guidelines. The rest of all the things are direct quotes. So this is for the mental and behavioral disorders and the next one we will see the nervous system. Now in this nervous system first thing is you need to understand the physiological part. So generally we will be getting this series in the Z00 to Z99 series. Now 
Now here we have brain and spinal cord, this as we know. And we have two types of nervous system here, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system here. Now peripheral nervous system means here, this part. Means one side, this side and this side we will call it as peripheral nervous system. Now this part, this is one laterality and this is another laterality. Now both sides we will call it as peripheral nervous system. And this, this one we will call it as central nervous system. So this part whichever are coming from here. So, this part will call it as central nervous system. Now, here there are some type of uh, diseases which are listed here. Cerebral degeneration, these are the common terms which will be coming across when you are dealing with the nervous system. Now, cerebral degeneration and Parkinson's disease and meningitis etc. are the conditions affecting the central nervous system. Now, these are all the things comes under the cerebral, central nervous system. And polyneuropathy, myasthenia gravis and muscular dystrophies affect the peripheral nerves. Now, you can clearly identify here which all the, what all the diseases are coming under the central nervous system and what all the things are coming under the peripheral nerves. Now, peripheral nervous system includes the autonomic nervous system which regulates the activity of the cardiac muscle and smooth muscle and glands. So, it will be regulating these things, cardiac muscle, smooth muscle and glands it will be under the control of peripheral nervous system. So, that is why here, if you clearly observe, now here cardiac muscle and smooth muscle and glands, so it will be under control of peripheral nervous system. Now, here when there is a cardiac muscle, activity is under peripheral nervous system. So, when the patient is having the peripheral nervous system problems, then the effect will be directly on cardiac muscle. That, mean, that means cardiac related problems will be there and smooth muscle. Now, smooth muscle, wherever the smooth muscles are there, there the problem will be. Like for example, smooth muscles, where exactly it will be present. So, mainly it will be in the arteries and veins. There will be smooth muscle. Now, there will be a problem in the arteries and veins also when there is an effect in the peripheral nervous system and the glands like adrenal glands. So, these adrenal glands will be under the control of peripheral nervous system and if there is a problem in these glands, so whatever the hormones the adrenal gland is releasing, there will be differences there and as a result, there will be a lot of physiological changes in the body because of the effect of peripheral nervous system. Now, coming to the non-psychological things, that is pain. Now, G89, G89 series is a common code for pain. This already we have seen this, G18, G89 series, pain not elsewhere classified. It is also used in conjunction with codes from other categories, chapters to provide more detail about the acute or chronic pain and the neoplasm related pain. Now, here it is listed only two or three acute, chronic and neoplasm related pain. But apart from this, you will be having the other specification also. Like whenever you are checking for the pain code, you need to check for acute, chronic, neoplasm related pain and also you need to check for whether it is post-operative pain or you can also check the site of the pain. So, whether the site of pain is at the joint area or at the muscle area or at the limb area. Now, the other guideline says, if the pain is not specified as acute or chronic, post thoracotomy, post procedural or neoplasm related, do not assign the codes from G89. So, if the pain is not specified, you cannot use this G89 series. So, this pain is not specified as acute or chronic, post thoracotomy, post procedural or neoplasm related, do not assign codes from G89. Because G89 codes will be mostly specifying with this or G89 codes will be complying with this acute, chronic or post-operative whatever the li there are listed here, it will be related with these things. If it is not related with these things, then you are not supposed to use this G89 series. You will be getting the other series. And a code from G89 should not be assigned if the underlying diagnosis is known. 
unless the reason for the encounter is pain or the control or the management and not management of the underlying condition. Now here when G89 series, so in simple terms we can convert this. So G89 series you can use it when the patient is coming for pain management. In a single sentence if we want to understand this. If the patient is coming for the pain management, then only you need to code this as a primary code, G89 series. This also we have discussed earlier. G89 series, you need to use it when the patient is coming for the pain management. So, when the patient is coming for the pain management means, if the patient is coming particularly for the treatment of pain, in that case you need to code for G89 series as a primary code. Now, what are the specifications here? Codes from category G89 may be used in conjunction with codes that identify the site of pain if it provides the additional information. Now, the same thing again, G89 series, you can add more specification if the site of pain is mentioned and that should be having the additional information in your documentation then only you can use the more specified codes. Now we have an example also here. If the code describes the site of pain but does not fully describe as acute or chronic, then site specific code and G89 both need to code. Now here site specific code you need to code and with that you need to code for G89 series. Now here you can see. It is mentioned as chronic right knee pain. Now here when you are checking these codes, M25.561, now this is, now when you are coding this M25.561, in the description it is mentioned only pain in right knee. But here what is the description what we are supposed to code? Chronic right knee pain. So when you are assigning this M25.561, it is explaining only the right knee pain. So, what about this chronic? So, for this chronic, we need to code it separately. That is G89.29. So, to fill in the more specificity, we are adding one more code that is G89.29 to specify other chronic pain. So, what is this other chronic pain? Other chronic pain is right knee pain. So, chronic right knee pain, you need to code two codes here, M25.561 and with that you need to code for G89.29. So, this is a complete code set. Now, here there are some uh, things listed here, G89 as a first listed diagnosis. So, here first listed diagnosis means it is a primary diagnosis. So, when an encounter for pain control or management, then G89, we need to code it as a PDX and the underlying cause of pain or site specific pain should be reported as additional diagnosis. So, here what we are coding it first, G89. So, what is G89 here? G89 means it is the type of pain and second code you need to code it as a site of pain. Now, this is a type of pain. And additional code you need to code it as a site of pain. So you can add this point here. So when an encounter for pain control or management, then you need to code for G89. That is first you need to code for type of pain. So what is meant by type of pain here? Whether it is acute or chronic, these two are the type of pain. And the site of pain, site of pain means exactly where the pain is, whether it's the knee joint or the shoulder joint or at the ankle joint, you need to code the additional code as a site specific code. Now, next point, when a patient is admitted for the insertion of neurostimulator for pain control, we can use G89 as PDX because here the patient is coming for the pain control, that is pain management is coming as we have discussed earlier. When the patient is coming for the pain management, always you need to code for G89 as a primary code 
and what is the exception here exception if the patient is admitted for any procedure to treat underlying condition and at that time neurotrans neurostimulator inserted then underlying condition is pdx now here in this case why the patient is coming if the patient is admitted for any procedure because here the patient is coming for the procedure he is not coming for the pain so that's why we are not supposed to code for the g89 as a pdx so what is the main abnormality is there for which the patient is coming for the procedure that one you need to code it as a primary diagnosis and then you need to code for g89 so overall thing is first thing is you need to check whether why the patient is coming to the hospital whether the patient is coming for the hospital for pain or not if he is coming for the pain we will call it as a pain management and we need to code g89 as a primary code suppose if the patient is not coming for the pain management he is coming for some other procedure and with that procedure the patient is also having the pain in that case we need to code the actual reason why the patient is coming to the hospital for a procedure that we need to code as a primary diagnosis followed by the g89 series that is for the pain now pain due to devices or implants or grafts now what is this device or implants or grafts so generally when the physician is performing some kind of procedures he'll be placing some devices that is prosthetic devices he'll be placing or he'll be placing some implants or sometimes he may place some grafts so when he is placing some grafts devices or prosthesis or implants so all these things are foreign objects foreign objects means it will not be from the body it will be placing from outside so when he is placing from outside the patient may experience some kind of pain or sometimes he may experience some time some kind of complications from that that may be a pain or that may be an infection or that may be a swelling or that may be abscess or cellulitis so multiple kind of things he may experience sometimes the device may be leaking or the some sometimes the device may be broken or dislodgement or displacement so a lot of different type of things the patient may experience so out of all these type of things out of all these type of problems the pain is one of the type now we'll see how we need to code this pain when it is coming from the devices implants or grafts now routine or expected post operative pain immediately after surgery should not be coded so immediately after the surgery if the patient is experiencing pain we should not code it post operative pain not associated with specific post operative complication is assigned to the appropriate post operative pain code in the category g89 now when you are coding for the post operative pain you will be getting this in the series of g89 this also we have seen it post operative pain now you can see it here g89.18 that is other acute post procedural pain that is post operative pain now here post operative pain associated with specific post operative complication example such as painful wire sutures is assigned to the appropriate codes found in chapter 19 that is so these type of things you will be getting in the chapter 19 that is injury poisoning and other external causes so you will be getting from these series this will be discussing in that chapter chapter 19 and the default for post thoracotomy and other post operative pain is not specified as acute or chronic is the code for the acute form so what it is uh, mentioned here the default for the post thoracotomy so what is meant by thoracotomy thoracotomy what is meant by otomy otomy means incision 
thorax inside the chest area. So the physician will be incising it at the chest area. So that will call it as thoracotomy procedure. So why the physician will be performing this thoracotomy procedure? If he want to perform some kind of procedure at the chest area inside the organs which are inside the thorax. So for that reason he will be incising there. So the default for this type of post thoracotomy procedure and other post operative pain not associated as acute or chronic is the code for the acute form. So what it means if nothing is mentioned whether it's acute or chronic for this post thoracotomy you need to code the acute form as a by default code. So that means you need to code for acute post thoracotomy pain. So that you need to code it here. And the chronic pain is classified to subcategory G89.2. Now this also the direct code you will be having G89.2. Now you can see the code here. G89.2. So this is a chronic pain not elsewhere classified. Now there is no time frame defining when the pain becomes chronic pain. The provider's documentation should be used to guide use of these codes. That means you can never identify whether it's an acute or chronic, chronic pain as per our knowledge. If it is documented as acute then only we need to code it as acute and if it is mentioned as chronic then only we need to code it as a chronic pain. And the central pain syndrome that is G89.0 and chronic pain syndrome are different than the term chronic pain. And therefore, code should, be, should only be used when the provider has specifically documented this condition. So, when it is mentioned as chronic pain, you should not take this central pain syndrome. That is chronic pain syndrome, you should not take it because both are different. So, if it is mentioned as chronic pain, you need to code for the chronic pain only. And if it is mentioned as chronic pain syndrome, you need to code for chronic pain syndrome only. Both are not same here. And the next one is neoplasm related pain. Now neoplasm related pain directly you will be having the code G89.3 is assigned to pain documented as being related, associated or due to cancer, primary or secondary malignancy or tumor. Now here also whenever you want to code this G89.3 it should be clearly mentioned that the patient is having the pain which was caused because of the neoplasm or cancer then only you are supposed to use this G89.3 because without the relation, without the cause and effect relationship, you should not code the G89.3 which is neoplasm related pain. You can code this only if it is mentioned clearly about the cause and effect relationship. Now this code may assign as PDX when reason for encounter is pain control management and neoplasm code assigned as additional code. Now here also the same thing. Now here also the same thing what it is mentioned here if the patient is coming for the pain management again you need to code for neoplasm related code as a neoplasm code as a secondary code you need to code and the pain code you need to code it as a primary diagnosis. Now coming to the hemiplegia or hemiparesis condition now here hemiplegia or hemiparesis now if you split these two terms Hemiparesis, hemi means one side and paresis means paralysis. Now one side paralysis will call it as hemiplegia. Now it is mentioned it clearly here. Hemiplegia is paralysis of one side of the body. Now this series you will be getting the G81 series with a fifth character to indicate the side affected and whether the affected side is dominant or non-dominant side. Now here the dominancy, dominancy means if the patient is using right right side mainly then we will call that right side as a dominancy or the dominant side. For a left handed person left hand will be the dominant and for right handed person right, right side will be dominant side. So here the concept called dominant and non-dominant side. 
now we see the course how it will be differentiated here if you go for the course g81 now you can see it here now any type of hemiplegia we have different type of hemiplegia here flaccid hemiplegia and spastic hemiplegia and hemiplegia unspecified now when you are coding these codes the fifth character here 0 1 2 3 and 4 these things will be this fifth character will be changing based on the whether it is unspecified side or whether it is coming on the right side or whether it is coming on the left side or the right side non dominant and left non dominant and left dominant and right dominant so depending on the dominant side and the non dominant side your fifth character will be changing so that you need to check it clearly suppose <coughs> suppose if the patient got affected to the left hand side now in that case you need to take this left dominant side sorry left non dominant side suppose if i mention that a left handed person got affected on the left side then you need to consider it as a left dominant side the right dominant side suppose if the right handed person got affected on the right side then you need to consider it as a right dominant side and for a left handed person if he got affected on the right side then you need to take it as a right non dominant side this one we need to take so this is a major thing here you need to understand now here if the left side is affected the default is non dominant and if the right side is affected the default is dominant now coming to the ambidextrous patients now the ambidextrous patient means the patients who can use left hand and right hand in the same pattern they can use equally he can use so those type of patients we'll call it as ambidextrous patients so in those type of ambidextrous patients the default should be dominant that means right hand will be the dominant and left hand will be the non dominant for those type of patients now hemiplegia occurring in connection with the cerebrovascular disease so generally when the patient is having the cerebrovascular disease or we have seen uh, some synonyms for this that is transient ischemic attack that is cerebrovascular accident and the brain stroke or the cerebral stroke all these things are seen so when the patient is having this cerebrovascular disease or TIA the patient will be having hemiplegia condition now in this a code from category G81 you need to use that is hemiplegia and the hemiparesis is assigned as an additional code with CVA disease now how we need to code the first thing is you need to code for first you need to code for CVA and then you need to code for hemiplegia that is G81 series now here one example we have when the patient is admitted at the later time with hemiplegia or hemiparesis or weakness of one extremity due to sequela now here sequela now here the concept called sequela comes sequela we can also call this as late effects or residual effects late effects or residual effects and sequela all these three are same now what it means let's say the patient is having the cerebrovascular disease he got affected with the cere cerebrovascular accident earlier before two years and now the patient has got some kind of problem which is related to this cerebrovascular accident after two years so that we'll call it as sequela now here in this case in this example the patient is getting admitted with the hemiparesis at the later time that means this will be considered as a sequela here in that case you need to code for i69 series so this is considered as late effect or residual effects of cerebrovascular accident now if you see the series i69 you can see it here sequela of cerebrovascular disease so here there are a lot of uh, diagnosis here sequela that may be the patient may experience the cognitive